All right, it's time for a little bit of a DIY video. I just got this Predator platform that I'll be hunting off of with a saddle this year. It's made by Tethered. Came straight from the factory in bare aluminum. So it's a great starting point to do your own homemade camo, however you want to do it. And this is my method. This is, uh, I've done a shotgun like this in the past and I've done a couple other things. I've done a tripod one time uh, and a rifle stock for someone. But I'm doing my little tree bark pattern that I've come up with using sea sponge and rattle cans of spray paint. So you'll notice it's got a bolt here holding the post to the base of the platform with a couple bushings. We're going to unscrew and take those off and set them to the side. I'll leave this top piece attached because I don't really need to paint between the cracks there or anything. And uh, then we're going to degrease and clean this all. I'm going to wear gloves because you don't want fingerprints or any type of oil getting on the bare metal. We want to put a primer down on bare clean metal. That's why I got a degreaser for that. So we'll take this apart. This bolt here is for adjusting the pitch of your platform. So you unscrew it, it pitches down a little more. You screw it in, it pitches up a little more. You get the picture. That's going to come out because I don't feel like painting over it. Like I said, I'm going to wear gloves. And then as soon as it's degreased, I'll break out the fishing line and I'm going to hang them up by, from strings of fishing line and then we're going to go and put a coat of primer on let it dry as long as it needs to dry and then we're going to put on a base coat and then start making the pattern so all these lower bolts here take a half inch socket or wrench upper bolts a little smaller but like i said i'm going to leave those on these are nylon lock nuts so they don't back out on their own don't mind the chickens Something's got them fired up. Save these bushings. All right, so that is a uh, 3 16th hex Allen wrench here. So I'm gonna try something different this time. Engine degreaser. Should accomplish the same thing as mineral spirits or whatever. Since this is already bare, clean metal, it's not dirty to start with, I'm just gonna be wiping it down with paper towels and not doing any scrubbing because it's really not necessary with a brand new platform. All right, now I'm not just gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna take it over to the hose and uh, wash it off with some clean water. So I'll be using this self-etching primer just to make sure it gets a good bond on the aluminum. I'm going to have to walk around this as it spins. I think two thin coats of primer should do it for this. So the instructions for this primer say to wait two minutes between coats, so it's been two minutes. We're going to coat it one more time, and then it says to give it 30 minutes before uh, adding a top coat. Back to the engine degreaser real quick. I think on hindsight I would have rather used carb cleaner or something like that, which evaporates a lot faster. This you definitely want to wash off with water, which I did but that carb cleaner, you spray it on and it pretty much just evaporates and takes everything with it. All right, it's been about 30 minutes. I'll be using the Rust-Oleum camouflage. This is what I've used in the past and it has worked well for me. The base coat's gonna be the tan color and then we'll add in the darker colors later. Uh, I find this makes the most realistic tree bark pattern. So use a lighter base color and we'll do two coats of this as well. All right, I just finished the second coat. Now we're gonna let it dry for a while before I can handle it and uh, start painting on the pattern. 
All right, so the can says it's ready to touch after an hour at 70 degrees, but it's a lot hotter than that, and it's been almost an hour, so it's dry enough to touch. For the camo pattern, I've got myself a paper plate to spray the paint on because I'm actually painting it on with this sea sponge. Now, I bought this sea sponge either at a craft store or at Walmart in the craft aisle. Uh, it's sold with all the other painting supplies and I trimmed it up with a razor knife so that you get these little thin strips of sea sponge and that's going to be our the base of our uh, tree bark pattern. So I've got one here and then I've got one here so we can experiment with different pieces and see which one looks the best. The secondary color is going to be brown and then we'll go in later and uh, do a little bit of accent colors with a little bit of black and a little bit of green just to make it more realistic. So first we're going to test the sponge and make sure it looks good. You spray a little blob and you got to work quickly because that paint dries pretty quick. Dip it in there. This one looks pretty good. That's going to be the basis of our tree bark. And I've got a video from several years ago where I did this to a shotgun, so if you've seen that, it's basically the same thing. So, I'm going to start with this side because it's got more surface to work with. And don't forget to shake your can periodically as you're doing this. So dab it in the paint, blot off the extra. We're gonna go in on the inside here and do it throughout the whole thing. All right, so this side is done. Did it on all sides. It's kind of tough to do this pattern on a platform like this with all these grooves and small surfaces, but I think it turned out okay. Now I'm going to set it to the side and let it dry a little bit while I do the post. And then once one side of the post is done, we'll come back and do the other side of this and then do the other side of the post after that. Now before I go with the clear coat, remember I said I was going to touch it up with some other colors. So I got black paint here and a really cheap paintbrush that kind of works. Now I'm going to go in between the darker areas and give them a little bit of extra depth, especially when you look from a distance. It's not going to look like it's painted black. It'll look like actual shadows between like tree bark. You think we're trying to imitate tree bark here, so that's what I'm going for. Give it a little extra depth. All right, so you can see where I've just touched it up with a little bit of black paint, just in the darker areas. All right, so before we do the clear coat, one more color. I'm just gonna throw a little moss on there with this olive drab green, same paint, green color, and a fresh piece of sea sponge. And we're not gonna put a lot on, just a little blob here and there, just like there's moss growing on the tree trunk. That looks good. All right, so that was probably the least amount of paint, just kind of a little extra touch. You can't see it too well, but it adds just a little more color, makes it more uh, realistic, I think. Now we'll let this dry for 20 minutes or so, and then we're gonna break out the clear coat, give it two coats of that, and then it's ready to dry for a couple days, and then it'll be ready to get up in a tree. All right, notice it's getting dark out. I start about 4.30 and it's about eight o'clock now, so you can get this done in an afternoon easily. What I'm 
clear coating it with is this Rust-Oleum matte. Note it's matte, not glossy, not satin. This is camouflage, so we don't want it to be shiny. So get the matte clear enamel. I'm gonna give it probably two good coats. All right, so you may notice here with the clear coat, it's a little bit shiny, but that's just kind of the nature of the beast with clear coat. You can't get it completely flat, but this is probably the least shiny spray that they've got. Just make sure you get a matte finish and it won't be a big deal. Just think of all the leaves and twigs and things that shine in the woods when the sun hits them, it's not a big deal. All right, so these are done for the time being. Now, to make sure the paint is fully cured and hardened, I'm gonna take these off the line and set them aside for a couple days just to make sure that the paint is done doing its thing and it's ready to go. So here in a couple days when this is ready, I'm gonna reassemble it and I'm gonna make a video showing my new setup for this season, my new mobile hunting setup. Now, last year I started hunting out of a saddle and I had my, I've, I've got a video up there on, on what I was using last year, but I've made some big upgrades this year and I cannot wait to get into a tree. So uh, stay tuned for that if you'd like to see, if you're into public land hunting or just staying mobile and, and changing setups every time, then, then you probably like to see what I've got going on because a lot of guys are kind of doing the same thing. So that's about it for this video. Um, stay tuned for the next video when I reassemble this. I'll show you in daylight, you know, how it looks and how it functions. And I'll show you everything else I've got as far as the setup. Deer season's this close. Time is ticking. I'm getting everything ready, so stay tuned and pretty soon we'll be in a tree chasing those white tails. Hopefully this helped you and you know, gave you some ideas on what you could do for your own tree stand or saddle platform, whatever it may be. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all next time.